Welcome to Reading Africa. Today we're going to read about the Swahili people. The Swahili people are a Bantu ethnic group inhabiting East Africa. The Swahili people originate from Bantu inhabitants of the coast of South East Africa in Kenya, Tanzania and Mozambique. These Bantu speaking agriculturalists settled the coast at the outset of the first millennium. They were into agriculture and finish and fishing from the 6th century CE and they engaged in long distance trade. The similarity to contemporary sites such as Mkokotoni and Jerusalem indicate a unified group of communities that developed into the first centre of coastal maritime culture. The coastal towns appear to have engaged in Indian Ocean trade at this early period and trade rapidly increased between the mid 8th and 11th century. Many Swahili claim a Shirazi origin, but this is believed to be a myth based on African migrants who seem to have developed a concept of Muslim Shirazi as they moved further southwards, near Malindi and Mombasa. The long-standing trade connection with the Persian Gulf gave credence to these myths. Some believe that the origins of the Shirazi subgroup of the Swahili people is based on immigrants from the Shirazi region in southwestern Iran, settling in various main pots and islands on the eastern African seaboard. Hence, the earlier occupants had been displaced by incoming Bantu populations. The second argument suggests that Shirazi migrants from Persia first settled in the Horn of Africa and in the 12th century as the gold trade with the distant ports of Safala on the Mozambique seaboard grew, the settlers moved southwards to various coastal towns in Kenya, Tanzania, northern Mozambique and the Indian Ocean Islands. By 1200 CE they had established local sultans and mercantile networks on the islands of Kilwa, Mafia, Comoros along the Swahili coast and in northwestern Madagascar. Hence the so-called Shirazi tradition represents the arrival of Islam in these areas. Furthermore, genealogy extants from mosques and coins demonstrate that the Shirazi were not Middle Eastern immigrants but northern Swahili African Muslims who moved south. They should be seen as indigenous African Muslims who played the politics of the Middle East to their advantage. The Swahili people speak the Swahili language as a mother tongue which belongs to the Bantu branch of the Niger Congo family. The language contains words from Arabic, African and Persian societies. The Swahili people follow the Sunni denomination of Islam. For centuries, the Swahili depended greatly on the trade from the Indian Ocean. The Swahili have played a vital role as middleman between Southeast Central and South Africa and the outside world. Trade contacts have been noted as early as 100 CE by early Roman writers who visited the Southeast African coast in the 5th century. Trade routes extended from Kenya to Tanzania into modern Congo. These goods were brought to the coast and sold to Arab, Indian and Portuguese traders. Historical and archaeological records attest to Swahilis being prolific maritime merchants and sailors who sailed the southeast African coastland to far away lands as far as Arabia, Persia, Madagascar, India and even China. Chinese pottery and Arabian beads have been found in the ruins of Great Zimbabwe. During the pottage of the Middle Ages, ivory and slaves became a substantial source of revenue. Many captives of the Portuguese sold in Zanzibar ended up in Brazil, which was then a Portuguese colony. Swahili fishermen of today still rely on the ocean to supply their primary source of income, 
fish is sold to their inland neighbours in exchange for products of the interior. The Swahili are generally considered a relatively economically powerful group due to their history of trade. They are comparatively well off. According to the United Nations, Zanzibar has a 25% higher per capita GDP than the rest of Tanzania. This economic influence has led to the continued spread of their culture and language throughout East Africa. The architecture of the Swahili people is thought to be of Arabic or Persian style and origin. Archaeologically, evidence suggests a predominantly African genesis and sustainment. This could be accompanied later by an enduring Arabic and Islamic influence in the form of trade and an exchange of ideas. The Kilwa was noted as a very fine, substantially built town and all its buildings are made of wood. Architecture included arches, courtyards, isolated women's quarters, the mirab, towers and decorated elements on the buildings themselves. Many ruins still can be observed near the southern Kenyan port of Malindi in the Gid ruins. This is the end of the reading of the Swahili peoples and culture. Thank you for listening.